got like all the cracks. Like I don't know. It's like the cracked glaze. Is it supposed to be like that, you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a special it glaze feel- that does that. Yeah. That makes me feel better about drinking out of it. Well, it's it's <laughs> like crackle glaze and then it's a uh, like a clear coat almost like wood. It's another coat of glaze that you put over. It's like I saw on um YouTube there was like a guy that was breaking glass and he was putting like a piece of glass in between two other pieces of glass and then like making like glass stairways that were like the glass mm. in the middle was broken. Oh, sure. That's Which like, it looks like it was totally shattered. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's wild. <laughs> We've gotten to the point where we break things on purpose because it looks cool. Yeah. Right. It's it <laughs> a pretty good place to be, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Should we pour? Oh, I'm down to pour. Okay. Batten. Normally we cut the pour if if it's too long, but now we have video so people can actually see us pour. So it's a whole nother it's a whole long experience. Long. The joke, the running joke was yes, we actually do drink coffee on this show because <laughs> right. people couldn't hear us <laughs> right. drink when we only had audio. <laughs> you didn't slurp the coffee loudly. No. Oh. Well, there's like a gate on the microphone too, so like mm. it cuts out some of the background noise, so you couldn't really hear like yeah. all the pouring all the time. Just funny. Yep. What are we drinking, Cole? We're drinking quick water coffee. Yeah, we are. We're drinking Zambia quick water mm. coffee. I'm ready. Yep. How do you do? <laughs> Compared to in store, <laughs> in house. That's good. Yeah, Amen. that's great. I, I all I can think about though is, like, how does it taste out of the black? Out of the black ones, because because you always serve the green ones at yeah. the at the store. Well, we're actually, I'm gonna switch them to white because okay, okay. I think you know based on some testing and your comments mm-hmm. also. Yeah. But what's really funny is, uh, cappuccinos taste really good out of the green one. Really. Random. Interesting. Have you tried lattes in? No. In them? I mean, they only fit. That's They're so only six ounces. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Is this the psychology of the color of the cup? And the material of the cup. If you drink out of glass, it's even different still. Well, it's still based more in the color. Okay. It's because you can see through gotcha. it, not yeah. Yeah. the glass itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. So interesting. Yeah. It's crazy. It's wild. What, I mean, educate me a little. What have you found? <laughs> like the... Because you gave me just a cup, you gave me a white, the green, and the cortado glass. Yeah, the clear one. Yeah. And the glass is, it's almost like what the color is or what it looks like, where it's like it, it feels like watery or like thin, maybe out of the glass versus like a dark is maybe a little bit more thicker or like the mouth feel is kind of like different depending on. Does it taste the like a, color. like the roast is darker? Mm, just accentuates. I mean, I haven't tested especially black versus, you know, mm. white, but from the article I was reading, black will make it taste, will accentuate the bitterness a little bit versus blue will bring out sweetness more than any other color. Mm. And then I, can't, I, can't, I actually don't remember what they said about white. <laughs> yeah. But what was like the, because Kirk was. The first time I heard about this was with Kirk. Oh, yeah. He was saying, was it like the, uh, it was like a darker green coated outside and like a blue inside is like the most preferred. There was something that he I mentioned that, that was like. One of, I think that's his, one of his mugs. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe he just came up with that. I yeah. don't know. Kirk, yeah, yeah. Kirk just spoke for everybody, <laughs> actually. <laughs> He's, He's like, this is how it is. Yeah, right. This <laughs> is objective. Yeah. I have. I have two that I drink out of at home and they're just plain white, kind of like thicker porcelain uh, mugs. Mm. And they're, and then it, my experience is always slightly different when I drink out of the green ones mm. at your place. Mm-hmm. 
So it's just interesting. It's really, if you you start paying attention to do it you, and you're kind of like, what? Do you think it's something that once you're aware of, you can't like, like you said, you can't stop thinking about what it would taste like in a different, gla- like in a different Prob- mug? Probably. Yeah. yeah. I mean, especially if you're, I mean, yes, anyway, but I think especially if you're like thinking about what the coffee right. tastes, yeah, is sure. tasting like, yeah. then you're definitely thinking about that. Yeah. Right. It's all factors included goes into how it tastes, I guess. Is that ceramic? Mm. I don't. I actually don't know. Yeah, I don't. It's <laughs> it's made, almost made like in Japan. Stone. It's yeah. the late yeah, stone it's from a... the volcano of <laughs> <laughs> probably some. Ceramic. Yeah, it is made in Japan. It's origami. I love their. So it's paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. <laughs> so paper. Cup. You never hear that joke, huh? <laughs> it be melted. It's like a paper straw. Paper mache that's been coated with something else. Coated, varnished. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Well, um, welcome to the podcast. Uh, this is our first, welcome back. I guess, official episode of season two. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks for joining us. If you're new here, this is Until It's Gone, the, a podcast where the conversation ends when the coffee runs out. Basically, the premise is we're just going to have coffee and uh, we press record when we have it and then we hit end when we're done. And it's really laid back, just kind of an extension of um, intentionality of relationships that we're trying to foster in our lives and we hope that it's valuable to you guys as well yeah yep um we're at local legend uh recording thank you josh for allowing us to use your space yes sir um so here we are uh we have a guest today stephen curtis Uh, hello (laughs) welcome of quick water (laughs) coffee which is also our sponsor of the podcast and we're very grateful for that um love Steven, what you guys are doing yes we love what you're doing over there in the big old town of rockford <laughs> <laughs> huge town your, your huge hometown town. yeah my hometown yeah. of rockford yeah but um steven is a husband he's a father uh have you guys always been in grand rapids uh yeah okay i, I grew up south of grand okay rapids yeah and so most of grew up in grand rapids yeah. so native and bringing some coffee to the rockford community now which is sweet yeah quick water opened November, right? October. October. Yeah, yeah. Soft open. Yeah. Soft open. Yep. And uh I've been just building a relationship. Met through Kirk actually mm-hmm. uh last year. And we're it's wild to be at a table drinking coffee with you. <laughs> so crazy. Well, what is kind of funny about, you know, the pr- premise of the podcast is it's just like what happens in a coffee shop like every day. Right. Right. So (laughs) that where you, you're meet a friend for coffee and then you're talking and then all of a sudden you're like, man, like, what are we like, what are we talking about? Yeah. Um, go off the deep end. I knew somebody, you know, from a former place that would always be like, we should have been recording this. <laughs> and lo and behold. Classic. There's people doing that. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what happened between Cole and I to yeah. start this. Right. Is we just, you know, we work in together and like all of a sudden just getting into these conversations like, where did this come from? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I mean, that's that's definitely um, such a human experience, you know, that, that uh I feel like is maybe becoming a little bit of a lost art is just like slowing down and having a conversation and letting your thoughts wander or pondering different ideas. You know, I think we're so fast paced that we can't have a conversation without looking at our phone or like, I don't know, Mm -hmm. you know, and I know that from Cole and we'll definitely get into this a little bit. He's told me that that's been a big passion for you, even outside of just your passion for coffee is your passion for community within coffee. Um, so yeah. I'm, yeah, I don't know it, if I'm really thankful that, that the partnership is working out and I'm really excited to see where it goes yeah. because it seems like we're headed in the same direction. Well, that, and it's almost, I just think about like, that's, I feel like that's the body of Christ too, of just being able to like, how cool is it that, like, you're not a filmmaker and we don't own a coffee shop, but we can get on track with the same mission and bring our own gifts and talents to the table and then work together to further and to foster something bigger than ourselves and the kingdom of God, ultimately. But, mm. yeah, it's, yeah, like Nate said, we're both just blessed and humbled to be here. <laughs> <laughs> 
What an intro. Let's just end it now. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, go <laughs> home. Great. Wrap. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Steven. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Yep. And outro. <laughs> oh, that's that's good. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, yeah, we, we're excited. Usually when we have a guest on, we just kind of give you the floor almost essentially. Uh, and we really just want to hear your story um, and just talk through uh, whatever is also on your heart like right now or what you're seeing um like i'm sure there's a lot that you could say since october since mm-hmm. opening a coffee shop but i'm i think a lot of people would also just be interested to kind of hear leading up to that yeah over the years where did that love even come from or coming out of high school and college what did you want to do mm-hmm. or did you think you would be in the coffee industry but yeah um well, yeah, we can do like a quick ish overview. Give us a synopsis <laughs> of your life. Yeah. We want to know every detail in 30 seconds or less. Yeah, yeah. And no, and no. Go. I mean, I mean, like this, yeah, this is what it is. So, as much time or as yeah. little time as you want to take. Well, until the coffee's gone. Right. Yeah, we do have some rules to yeah. nearby, but yeah. we fudge it sometimes. Right. right. <laughs> when it's really good. Yeah. You're like, don't take that Now last people sip. can tell. Right. right. You know. This is how much time we have left. <laughs> it's like an hour of glass. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you can't see in here. So, no, right. right. Secret, you, don't, secret, you don't really know. Secret, secret. Yeah. Right. I'm not actually drinking. I mean, that's like, it's like the movie sip, right? Yeah. You're like, they don't have anything in that cup. Yeah. Well, right. it's not weighted enough. It's like the way that right, they move right, right. You're like, swinging, you're like, there's no liquid yeah, in there. Right. <laughs> um, well, so growing up, we didn't have a coffee maker in our house Mm -hmm. um i am assuming because my mom's from england and so we had a a french press and like a little like pour over device Mm -hmm. and she also drank tea more than coffee anyway so it would be coffee out of the freezer you know if 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 someone got coffee but it would would be like a pour over so just i think subconsciously that's what my earliest experiences of what like coffee was would have been that, but where, you know, I kind of fell in love with especially coffee, so to speak, uh, was my sister started working at a spot in Caledonia. And, uh, so I would go in there and this was probably, I was in high school now and, um, Go in there and get, you know, a flavored latte and it was delicious. And so, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. so it's like, you know, visiting my older sister and getting coffee and double I, pumps of syrup, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was, that was delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> um, so that place was definitely, you know, like a chain knockoff, you know, in, sure. independent place, but smoothies and yeah. All of the above. Yeah. Wraps. Paninis. Yeah. The whole the whole gamut. Um but yeah, that's kind of my first experience of like espresso and sure. that kind of thing. And um so then they had an opening and so I started working there. Uh and that would have been in two thousand one. So that's when I started in coffees in 2001. I was two two years old. <laughs> you weren't supposed to do it, man. You weren't supposed to. He's going to leave. I know. <laughs> Thank you for telling me been how in old coffee, I am. <laughs> been in coffee as long as I've been alive, essentially. Uh, so I worked there part-time and, um, you know, kind of funny sort of circle around, but I was interested in photography i helped a friend like shoot some weddings and stuff Mm -hmm. like that and um but so yeah didn't really know what i wanted to do but i like the artistic stuff um also had a dream to be in a band but (laughs) my my parents didn't really uh they were pretty strict on music and so i never really had the opportunity as a kid to playing anything so that I don't know, that never really went mm-hmm. that I wasn't gonna start in my twenties specifically. Um yeah. so then the owner of that place 
was looking to kind of make a change and I had the opportunity to take the place over in 2006. So that was kind of a, you know, more of a, felt like a buckling down of my (laughs) kind of similar to where you're thinking like, like, what do I want to do? I don't know. I'm like, all right, this is what we're going to do. Put the seatbelt on. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so that was a definitely a learning experience. Uh, had that place for about four I owned it for about four and a half years after that. And through that got interested in the roasting process, you know, as now being in industry a while, I would go travel around to different places and just was really fascinated why some coffees tasted really awesome and some were not so awesome. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. um, and just an interesting thing that popped in my head. So we used to buy coffee from a place in Oregon and they did have, uh, they had the row States on there, but it was definitely like an older school type place uh, that has since been acquired by one of the largest coffee, produ- coffee, like roasters, that roast, you know, like the tins of coffee type. <laughs> but anyway, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I just, I remember one time, like there was definitely a huge like drop in the way the coffee tasted at a certain, like it, it wasn't that long off of like roast, it would, maybe a couple weeks. I think it would all of a sudden it would just like go off a cliff and just like taste terrible. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that was just one, I don't know, but then we would get it shipped you know from oregon so it'd already be almost like a week from mm-hmm. rose before we'd get it yeah and so just it was i don't know this is what you were using at the shop in caledonia mm-hmm. yep so then just through that process got interested in roasting coffee and um bought a home coffee roaster and uh started roasting little batches in the back room and outside and yeah just didn't really know obviously what I was doing, but lots of trial and error. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, so then I, you know, I had like a couple people that would like specifically want, I mean, remember we had one guy that was, he just wanted like really dark coffee. He's like, Oh yeah. Give me some dark uh, coffee. Just burn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows who that is. <laughs> this one guy. Yeah. yeah. Motor oil. <laughs> but he would like buy like a couple pounds at a time. So <laughs> you're like, okay. Yeah. So your first like real client. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. So then ended up buying a coffee roaster off of eBay um, and started roasting supplementally for the shop and mm. um, kind of through that whole like process, uh, met up with someone who was roasting already in GR and uh, had been looking to maybe was talking about like opening up a, like a shop or uh i can't remember what the total idea was but like a brick and mortar or something yeah like a, there's a term for it that i just oh, can't yeah. think of <laughs> but um you know kind of like a display or uh whatever sure. um so and i you know i'm like yeah that's that sounds great you should do it <laughs> so <laughs> green light yeah uh but then he's like well how about you come and help me do that and partner up and i was like oh all right i see where this is going (laughs) (laughs) so uh so yeah i talked you know talked it over with my family and my parents and you know prayed about it and ended up pulling the trigger on that and sold the shop in caledonia and yeah did that for a while 10 years Mm -hmm. so you worked you partnered with him on that Mm -hmm. business and that's still in gr Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. yep so then we were trying to grow and had gotten some partners and um kind of the idea was to get things turned around you know like coming along and doing great and just was taking longer than everyone was anticipating and had some stuff change, you know, in our home finances, and I was like, I just couldn't couldn't keep it up. So, uh, so exited there in 2020, 
uh, incidentally. <laughs> kind of, it was in process <laughs> before everything went crazy, but yeah. um, then was not really planning on getting back into the industry because it's a lot of work and uh, generally it's not the most, you know, profitable is, or monetarily is easier money to be made yes than coffee yes exactly mm-hmm. um but yeah i had uh you know been kind of felt called back into it a little bit and also you know during that process was had started reading a book uh, called the practice by seth godin which kirk probably has talked about because i gave it to him after that talks about it a lot yeah um Hmm. where you know the the kind of the premise of his book is talking about art specifically but how it's inherently an act of generosity Mm -hmm. to create art and not from a biblical perspective or a christian's perspective but you know that just really hit home for me because it's like yeah that's it Hmm. definitely you know being in the coffee industry really is an act of generosity because you know there are you do get you know some rewards but it's not like like you said it's there's <laughs> there's easier money to be made mm-hmm. if that's what you're going for right yeah but you it is offering you know something to the world to people and to your community so you've it sounds like you've kind of like had the itch to express yourself through photography, through mm. um, music, and then, you know, probably didn't think of coffee as an expression for a while, I'm assuming. I mean, when you're, you're probably just like, oh, I want to work at this cool shop, mm. you know, it's where your sister was working. It's just a job. Yeah. Um, when did you and do you see that as like, I guess, a creative expression and how? Yeah. And for uh, you. Like I can see, but love to hear you talk about that generous aspect of coffee owning too. But yeah, um, yeah, I mean, definitely uh, something that I really, you know, enjoy. It's kind of somewhat comes to me comes back to what I call hospitality. Mm. Um, but that I enjoy giving people delicious things you Mm. know or good things right that they can enjoy so whether that was some you know beautiful beautiful photos or you know delicious coffee um good food you know like if we have people over that's kind of you know i don't want to just do whatever you know yeah (laughs) Yeah. something that doesn't you know it's like it's if you're going to do something, you want to give them something good, you know? Um, so yeah, it's definitely an expression of art of some sort. Right. And just kind of tying it back to, you know, our creator has given us really good and beautiful things. And, you know, then it's, he shared those with us and we're called to do the same share them with other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like roasting is a whole thing in and of itself. Like not only owning a shop, but like most shops don't roast. I would probably say that's fair to say, right? Like it might, I mean, depending on what city you're in, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. like, I would say that like on your, d- depending in Grand Rapids, that might not be true because there's a lot of people who do roast in Grand Rapids, yeah. but most shops don't roast their own or if they do, then maybe they're a bigger, you mm-hmm. know, it's like a lot of small coffee shops don't roast their own coffee. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, I think that, that, that'll change. That'll be changing, you know, it, for a lot of reasons. Technology. It, right. I mean, technology is going to be a huge part of that. Uh, there's a company called Bellwether that makes these, you know, electric self-contained roasters, um, which I think there's one or two in Grand Rapids, but It'll make it, it's, I mean, they're really expensive or you can lease them for a lot, but like anything, the price of technology will come down, right. you know, it starts really high and it's not too accessible, but it'll, it'll come down and it'll probably make 
like shops roasting their own pretty u- ubiquitous is what i would guess um and then you know so the t- technology but then also now these shops can say they roast their own coffee and it's going to be fresher and they can kind of choose what they want and i feel like that's a very important part of an ex- like an experience that i think like beyond just an initial love for coffee that like keeps me coming back into like a brick and mortar shop is mm. like um you know i live uh on fulton or like right off of fulton street so there's a few coffee roasters like right there and so just going in and like being like oh like what what's your single origin today or like you know those things and then being able to like have it it's not like um I still get like a cortado, <laughs> um, but you know, being able to switch it up a little bit and have that relationship with, I think maybe almost as the, like with the artist in a way, you mm. know, like you have the person behind this coffee. Um, and I, I'm sure I'm not talking to the person who roasted it, but um, at Quickwater you would be, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, so to, to, to come to Quickwater and see you and say like, what do you, what do you recommend? This is what I'm looking for. And, and like, giving you an opportunity to, to, um, I don't know, like that interaction is really like important and I think valuable beyond just a transaction. It's like, there's a relationship even in like an interaction of art and like generosity and like, it's not just a product, right? Like coffee is a, I guess a product, but it's, I think beyond that when you, there is that roasting, there is that intentionality from the person giving you the coffee it can be more than just a product. And yeah. and honestly, like I don't know what I was expecting when I went to Quick Water in terms of like the place, but it's just you can kind of sense that like coming in. And I know you've probably got <laughs> a bunch more plans because you said soft opening and <laughs> I know how that goes. Mm. But like it was a really um welcoming environment and um one that you could tell was like uh doused in intentionality. Like, I don't know, maybe it was the mural. Maybe it was just like all the little details, the attention to detail. Cause you can't ignore mm-hmm. that. Like we love attention to detail. And yeah. so that, you know, and just design and yeah, stuff like aesthetic. That. And, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I, I, I feel I no have a thought on question that. there. Yeah. I like, cause there's, and we've talked about this before, but that idea of, uh, like I love that you said welcoming because that's it's so true. But being able to come in and not be afraid to ask questions, mm-hmm. like I don't know what a cortado is, like versus I feel like there's some coffee shops that you could go to where it's like I don't want to ask. Like these people are like mm-hmm. snooty or like whatever. Like and to be able to create that, you got to feel like you got to dress a certain way to walk in. You yeah, know? or like people know look the at lingo. you. Yeah, like, it, I like. Even the t- whole technology thing, not to go back, but that's the exact same thing in the film industry. Like, okay, now cinema cameras are way more accessible than mm-hmm. they were. Mm-hmm. So that puts artistry in many more people's hands than just the top dogs that have an agency and have a crap ton of money to blow on a film camera and then make a bunch of films. Less gatekeepers. Yeah, and then the overhead comes down. And then, like you were saying, like, the the smaller guys then start roasting their own and then they just mm. cut out they they have way less overhead because then it's just all internal so i see a lot of similarities in that too but yeah mainly i i just love that idea where you create that space for people to learn and not be like looked down upon or like criticized or just just people being critical like over the counter because you don't know what a you know a miel is or like a cappuccino or like a single origin thing it's there for the people that want to get into it and want to like know the nuance but it's not shoved down your throat in a way that makes you feel like you should know that to have a proper experience yeah yeah i mean that's something we've talked about before but i don't know if you've really heard us talk about it well well i've heard things from cole but yeah just how there is a, you know, in the specialty coffee industry, there tends to be this, and probably every industry, honestly, but coffee is the one that I'm the most familiar with. So. <laughs> it's in film too, don't worry. <laughs> Where there's, um, you know, with coffee, they the there's a lot of roasters, especially that'll get, even shops will be focused on 
like, you know, the coffee itself because it is art and it's a really delicious thing. And so, but <laughs> they get, you know, <laughs> you're going to start having my, that, was a, that was a spasm. <laughs> <laughs> like, God, yes. I would just wanted to drink it so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Cut to commercial. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and they're so focused on the coffee itself that then when someone comes in who, like you're saying, doesn't know or whatever, wants whatever, cream in their coffee or, you know, half or a frappuccino. Yeah, frappuccino, <laughs> half yep. cream and then, you know, half heavy whipping cream in the yeah. coffee. Um whatever it is. And you know, the artist starts, you know, feels really disrespected by that because they're creating mm-hmm. this beautiful art and this person's just like They're asking for a big man. Right? Yeah. They're like, <laughs> "Uh, can you actually I got my own spray paint. I'm just going to yeah. Ooh, that looks way better. You, know, like, wow. <laughs> you missed the spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so it makes sense that you know that people might not have a good experience because it's like you know they're focused on the art itself. Um, but I think it's to me it's important to focus on the the person you know that you're creating the art for it's like the art itself in a way doesn't matter if the person doesn't enjoy it or appreciate it you know well and i think that that squanders someone who is new that wants to learn if they have an experience that is bad right out of the get-go they're not going to want to come back and they're not going to want it like if someone was curious about getting into the nuances of coffee of film of anything and they have this experience where they're they don't know anything and they're asking questions and they're being responded to in a way that is like putting them down like they're not going to want to continue to learn about that or be curious about that anymore and it'll just just kind of like squandering like a dream essentially where it's like oh like you you know whatever that ends up internalizing in that person's mind but it's like Oh, like, I don't know. I just have a heart for that where it's like, like there's people that like don't know things and to be gracious and to recognize like where they are in, in learning something that they might want to grow in or like learn more about and to be able to create that atmosphere where they feel comfortable stepping into that and not, not being afraid to ask questions or to not know what something is, is I think that's important. There's probably a difference between the the person who wants three quarters heavy whipping cream and doesn't want to learn than the person who also is asking like, wait, what is what is the difference? And oh, why is that better? You know, mm-hmm. but there, that, I think that does still s- ring true because it's not necessarily for you to to decide who they are. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, um, and I mean, I don't. It's not not appropriate to for any company person to decide what are they are going to offer right like not everyone has to you know if you're a fine artist you don't have to make prints that's totally mm-hmm. up to you yeah right but mm-hmm. you also it's not your call on whether somebody else does that <laughs> because there are people that only want prints that are something like that so right um yeah i think yeah i don't know there's a I, there is a tension between like leaving someone where they are, you know, comfortably Mm -hmm. and like bringing them along, but also not forcing that, which I mean, that's kind of like our walk. Right. Christ. Right. Like he does, he loves us too much to leave us where we are, but he he doesn't, not going to force us to change. Well, and yeah, just to clarify, like I'm talking about someone that is curious, like has the drive to like want to learn, like that isn't everyone. No, not everyone has that to treat those people the same. <laughs> yeah. But 
for the person that is curious, that curiosity can be snatched mm-hmm. away, I think, very quickly. With that's more so what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. And again, that's similar in our walk with Christ, too. Like, if someone's really curious and they're being discipled in a way that isn't positive, that isn't in line with the word, and that isn't, you know, good and how Jesus models for us, like, they're going to have a bad experience and have church hurt or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But. Mm. Hmm. How have you seen, um, so have you always, like you met, I, I'll ask this first. Um, have you always been in coffee? Cause I know you said that there's been some like in between moments. Um, when you weren't in coffee, what were you doing? Uh, so I did a uh, sales for exterior services company for a couple of years in between, but other than that, did you miss coffee? Uh, I mean, some yeah. things about it. Yes, yes, and no. It was it was a good break, you know, or reset. Um, I think one of the things that I really appreciate most was I did a lot of driving, so I listened to tons of audiobooks. Mm. So that was that was I really enjoyed that part of doing that because. You don't have a lot of time to listen <laughs> to audiobooks. It's loud and, too, and yeah, read or you know, it's just it's a different, it's more, it's time intensive in a different way for, you know, the especially brick and mortar type stuff. Yeah, so day to day stuff. Yeah, I feel like there's a. I was watching a video on just a guy, a guy in the coffee community on YouTube doing like a Q and A, but kind of talking about that romanticizing the idea of owning a coffee shop Mm. that quickly can quickly disappear once you start just working at a coffee shop for a couple months and then you realize that there's a lot of it's a job it's a job you're dealing with people as a manager you're dealing with your employees you're taking inventory you're you know customer service and all of that stuff where that's such a larger percentage of owning a coffee shop than the mm. than romanticizing it mm-hmm. through the rose colored glasses of oh I just want my own space and I just want to pull beautiful shots and mm-hmm. make latte mm-hmm. art like mm-hmm. it's it's <laughs> everything else yeah like you don't get to sit and read in your coffee shop <laughs> right <laughs> like, <laughs> right <laughs> yeah I mean I think that if you want to <laughs> relax and really enjoy the atmosphere of a coffee shop probably don't own one <laughs> <laughs> yep. that's fair yeah. Yeah. i feel like that's me for sure yeah <laughs> like yeah. um cole and i've always talked about like obviously we both have a passion for coffee and um as the film company's growing we're like well you know thinking and dreaming about a potential space as mm, it's needed mm-hmm. um and then just thinking about well it'd be so cool to have like just start with just like nice coffee from like for like the company and then just like kind of in, like let friends come and then like see what happens but yeah. then i'm like yeah knowing me like it's gonna be way too much than <laughs> it should be and like <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden i'm trying to run a coffee company instead of like mm-hmm. a film company so yep. i'm so yeah <laughs> i'm so the one who wants to try every flavor and try it out you know it would be for the enthusiast yeah kind of yeah but maybe i just need to figure out how i can interact with the things that i love with something that i'm already doing i don't know i'm i'm bad at that like like um i don't paint but i love paintings you know and i Mm -hmm. like to look at paintings and how do i participate in art or an art form that i'm not an artist in um and be okay with not being an artist right. and even though I love right. the medium. Yeah. Like film photography. Like like we, you know, we went on a photo walk and it was super fun, but mm-hmm. like I could so go down a rabbit hole, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, and I'm always in danger of doing that in mm-hmm. anything I come into yeah. contact with. That, I mean, and we're both very similar in that regard cuz I mean, I have a lot of hobbies, but once I start a hobby, I'm like in it and like go off the deep end with it. And I actually just, this is random, but I saw a book in Barnes and Noble the other day when I was there. I think it was by Amy Downs. That was, is something to the extent of like, that sounds fun. And it, (laughs) in the book, the book was talking about why you should have a hobby and like finding the fun 
again, like in life in general, by having hobbies and not like putting them on a shelf that's so high where it's like it sucks the fun out of it. So it was just interesting, but we're very like minded in that where it's like all the hobbies. It's like I love and I think that that's beautiful to understand the nuances like coffee making or making a pour over at home, like all the nuances of that or film and setting up cameras and learning how the cameras work. That's just how I'm oriented. Not everyone is, you know, but yeah, it's enjoyable. I mean, I think, yeah, you know, to that point, you could definitely have like a full, like an awesome coffee setup. You know, th- obviously the danger is, I mean, it sounds even from that book, like the danger is trying to monetize it. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Like if you keep it at four clients and guests and people yeah. that come in and it's just fun. That probably would be that's, fun. That's <laughs> right. It would still be fun. Yeah. Right. And then you just. The yeah. stress of monetizing. It. Yeah. Like once you turn, once you try to like turn that corner. Right. Cause then all of a sudden you feel like you have to have regular hours and then what happens if you got to go do something, then you got to hire somebody else to, you know, it's like, those are the things that create the stress. Yeah. Whereas if it's just, just for, for you, yeah, whenever it's just works. for you and clients and friends, yep. then mm-hmm. if you're not there, then no problem. Sorry, yeah. Guys. yeah. It's no pressure. Yep. No, I, I definitely tend to ruin my hobbies by, taking them too far and and that's also the same thing that you know it's like a good thing and a bad thing because i'm I'm yeah i'm an opportunistic person and so i can see opportunity and seize it and go for it but um yeah sometimes that's a curse it is yeah (laughs) definitely i was gonna ask you and i totally jumped into a different question but i was gonna ask you how um you like, I guess a little bit about your faith journey as well. Cause I know you're a Christian. This, this is a Christian podcast. We don't really label it as a Christian podcast, but we talk about it every episode. So we're not scared. Yeah. Um, so I guess like maybe, and, um, as much or little as you want to kind of dive into that, like how has your faith journey developed, um, through maybe that, like, I guess arc that, road. yeah, that arc that we kind of heard and, um, yeah, I would just love to hear that specifically as well. Uh, well, I grew up in the church. Um, you know, my experience of the church slash, you know, who God was, was, you know, you had to be good and do everything right in order to be Christian. Check the boxes. Yep. So I don't, you know, I, became a Christian quote unquote at a young age, but I don't think I really had a relationship with God, so to speak. Um, and really definitely went the opposite direction, you know, in my teens, early twenties, just didn't, you know, I believed in God, but I just didn't, he was not a focus or a part of my life at all. Mm. And, um, through some, you know, circumstances that were allowed to happen as often they do, <laughs> you know, kind of came to the point of, you know, I had a couple times of, you know, like feeling God's call on my life and, you know, trying to, once again, trying to be a good Christian as I saw, you know, as I thought and, um, obviously that doesn't work. And so anyway, back to then, you know, things kind of, you know, blew up a little bit and, um, you know, I was just like, I'm God, I can't, you know, I can't do it on my own. Like I've, I've tried to be a good Christian and mm. uh, that obviously that doesn't work. So if, if it's going to, if anything's going to happen, it's going to be have, have to be from you. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of the moment. And that was probably in my twenties. I mean, it was in my twenties. So I don't know exactly when, but, um, so that was kind of when he really got my attention and began our, you know, more relationally, my relationally based faith. And yeah, it's been ups and downs, obviously. For sure. You know, it's never a straight line. Yep. Yep. 
<laughs> That's good. But yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like, you know, for I kind of orchestrated me leaving my previous company, you know, just designed some very interesting things in our in our own life that you know, kind of a series of events that I don't think I would have been as open to mm. letting go if just all that stuff hadn't happened. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, <laughs> once again, like, <laughs> all right, not in the driver's seat. Right, yeah. here, here, this is this is where we're going. I mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> I don't really in. have a choice. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, you always have some choice, yeah. but it definitely felt it weighed on you. Like God was had. Let me like, like, I need you to let it go. You know, mm -hmm. like it's been whatever, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know. Maybe it's too important to me. And, mm. um, so, and then kind of the same with getting into quick water. I really, I honestly, I didn't want, I was, it's a lot of work and I wasn't really, <laughs> I wasn't You're really, like, like no, don't I sign know. me I was up. Like, don't no, put me on the yeah, list. I was like, eh. <laughs> You're like, like I've the, done some the, of that before. I don't yeah, want to do it again. Yeah. It's, it's Start a from lot. scratch. It's a lot. And I'm like, I don't, and you know, like, you don't really make much money and you know, like all these things, all these excuses on why I shouldn't do it. And <laughs> yeah. I feel like God just kept, you know, kept mm. poking me, tapping me and, you know, giving me little things. So I'm like, all right, I guess, um, I will trust you. I think mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah, today, definitely, I, definitely. Today maybe I will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One baby step. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's cool. So yeah, it's been a continu you know, continuing process of, you know, opening opening my hands and not trying to hmm. keep keep it all under my own control and it, having faith that <laughs> yeah. he's got me either way. Yep, for sure. I I feel like that um entrepreneurial journey um is like I don't know. It's interesting because I, in some ways, relate in, in terms of taking like risks like that, where you're like, this doesn't seem like, like you don't know what next month is like. You know what I mean? And I feel like it's easy. Um, I guess it's not easy, but it might be easier to trust that God is going to provide when you have a agreement that you're going to get a certain amount <laughs> next month and you can do the math and figure out if you're going to make it, you know, mm -hmm. but when you're, when you're an entrepreneur, I mean, there are good months, but there are also months where you're like, we're not eating that today or whatever, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, that like, I think I, we were talking about it before the podcast. That's been an experience for me. Everyone who's listening has heard me talk about that before. Just this, like that. It's just that, the, the leap, right? The, the difference of like, okay, God, like I'm going to open my hands to this and, um, trust you enough to, um, to, to take a risk and not that you're just doing it flippantly. Um, you know, that's something that you feel called to or the circumstances f allow. My experience has been, um, faithfulness from God, you know, and not to say that if I had was had a, m a month that you know it was a little slim, but there have been slim months that he wasn't good. You know, there's Job. Mm. <laughs> it's not like the prosperity right. of right. like my bank account is not tied to my faith. Um, but you're almost content with nothing. You know, it's like it's that like you know, God, if this fails, I'm content and I still trust you. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's the security you have to have to take a risk like that is like be okay with a failure <laughs> financially yeah. or like vocationally, I guess. Mm -hmm. There was a, there was a sermon that uh, I think, I think Jody preached at Berkeley, but it was essentially instead of saying like, instead of the what if questions of like, what if I don't have any projects that month and just kind of like your thoughts spiraling around that. The link she said, change the language to like, even if, where it's like, even if uh, blank doesn't happen, like God is still God and God is still good. And that was just such an encouragement to be like in that spot where it's like, what if like God doesn't come through in this way that I'm, I want him to, and he's going to come through in a different way instead of that almost 
being like, even if God doesn't come through in this way that I want him to, he's still God. Like he's still good. He will, you know, he's not going to hang me out to dry, but following Jesus is also hard too, where it's like, I just watched the first episode of season three of the chosen. And I think I forget who he was talking to, but he's like, are you ready to, Oh, I think he's talking to Judas and he's like, uh, Judas is like making the case and like presenting himself and asking Jesus to like be his rabbi. And Jesus is like, are you ready to do hard things? Like that was the, (laughs) that was what Jesus said to Judas Mm -hmm. to make sure that he was like kind of counting the costs essentially. But like, are you ready to do hard things? Like, are you ready to still declare that, you know, I'm good even in this scenario that you with your human mind, like can't see the through line, but I can cause I'm in control and I know what's best for you. But yeah, just recent thoughts. <laughs> Soaking it in. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know we're probably nearing, uh, the end of our coffee yeah. cups here. I have, do you have some, I have, I have, um, one more kind of question or thought because the word piqued my attention, but specifically hospitality. Um, the first two episodes of our podcast were about hospitality mm. um, and the, in the importance and impact of that. Um, how, I, I mean, what is your experience with hospitality? I know you said you like to make nice things for people when they come over. Um, how is that like, you know, people always talk about like being a missionary in your, in your work. Um, we talked about it with Kirk too, not just being a mechanic who has um, a, a tract that you hand to people after, but doing really good work and loving people through what you're doing um, as a testimony of action, not just, <laughs> hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to charge you too much for your car and not fix it right and then give you a track. <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, I, I don't know. What has your experience been like just serving people um, either through like i guess i guess through like maybe somebody who has been impacted by it or maybe just your personal impact of like you know what the lord's doing in your heart as you do it hmm. and that's okay if you're like nothing <laughs> <laughs> but i but it sounds like that's important to you yeah i mean i think i mean i don't there's nothing specific like a specific scenario that comes to mind but just i mean what what i do think of is you know probably the hospitality portion once again reminds me of my mom honestly of you know she it was really important to her to like make really good food for you know have plenty of food for like family get-togethers and all that kind of stuff and like you know do things really well and you know, to the extreme. So, <laughs> which I think that's a, yeah. that's a tension in that we mm-hmm. all wrestle with in every day of, right? Like if you're passionate about something and you believe in it, going too far is easy, you know, yeah. or, <laughs> you know, it's not, I, uh, it reminds me a little bit of, I feel like, you know, it's like, that's like our walk with Christ. Like he is like both and he's not an either or, you know, it's not, he's not an extreme in a, like Mm -hmm. you have to do all of this in order to whatever. It's like, no, there's going to be tension, you know, it's going to be messy and, and that's okay. Um, so, but yeah, she she always, my mom always liked to offer really good stuff. So you know, growing up, I had a lot of delicious, <laughs> delicious food. Because <laughs> yeah. if we had to get together, mom, you've be, ruined me. Yeah, yeah. Be really yeah. Good, you know? <laughs> um, so that aspect, I think, you know, definitely um, has translated over. And I think, you know, the the struggle is to not go into perfectionism, mm. right? Which that's where then it becomes about you, right? Which I. I think there's a, there is a wrestle with that mm-hmm. always, you know, it's, and that's kind of ties back a little bit to what we talked about, like with the, you know, the snooty coffee is like, mm-hmm. it starts to become about yourself, right. Instead of about who it's actually about. Mm. And so, 
you know, not necessarily having to, you know, if you have people over, you don't necessarily have to have the best thing. If it, you know, it doesn't always make sense to do that, right? Like that's, there's a time and a place for it, but sometimes, you know, you can have paper plates or, you know, just have something, you know, whatever, grilled cheese, you know, it doesn't have to be like this fancy thing necessarily, right? Mm -hmm. It's, you really the relationship is is utmost Mm. you know and some of those other things can tie into it but you know it doesn't need to ruin the relationship if you know if you spent like the martha versus mary you know like martha she was so focused on creating a really great experience that she missed the relationship Mm. and that's what jesus like you know hey (laughs) you missed it it. like that's those are it's not inherently bad things but you put so much importance on those mm-hmm. things that you missed me. Mm. You know, you missed that relationship. Mm. So that's the struggle. You know, that's definitely the tension that I, yeah. I wrestle with is. I love it. It's it, you know, when you're talking about, about the paper plates and stuff, like if you have somebody to your house and they have 20 minutes, like yeah. you don't have time to pull out all yeah. the stops. It's <laughs> actually like more respectful to like, just do something quick. Like Great. that's, you know, it's like oh, appropriate. Yeah. Absolutely. And so um, it reminds me of um, C.S. Lewis and Mere Christianity talking about this is like, w- this is a whole nother conversation, but um, re- the application of the law of human morality of like um, when to do what thing, mm. um, discretion, <laughs> wisdom, you know, when discernment, discernment when to, um, you know, when to get out the China plates and to make it a really nice experience when to cook up the prime rib or when to make a grilled cheese. And, um, what's cool about quick water is I think it's a place that lives in the tension. You know, I think it's a nice place when you walk in sometimes when coffee shops brand themselves as welcoming really just means it's dingy and there's not <laughs> great coffee and they're just acceptance of bad standards basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's not at all what quick water is. Mm. And that's not at all. Like you can still be excellent and be welcoming. Mm. Um, and, and I, I love that's, that is what life is. It's the tension, you know, the tension between um, a really good cup of coffee and service um, to, to the guests that will come in. So mm. yeah, I feel like that's a really good place to, to put a period on that. Amen. 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 <laughs> so the last segment of the show, we've coined uh, record time. So it's essentially music that you're listening to right now or an all-time favorite record or album specifically. Uh, getting If a, it's a song, that's okay. Yeah, it, it can be a single <laughs> too. We try to, uh, again, <laughs> like art, like trying to bring back into focus an album as art instead of just picking one and and listening to that song but listening all the way through as the artist intended more or less um so think on that if you have a if you have a record or all-time favorite i can go first mine is um my sister and i uh listen to a band called saint lucia st period l-u-i-c-a and they're almost like I would almost, we were listening to it before you got here, but they're almost, it's kind of like modern house ABBA. Like it's, it's like funky. Yeah. It's funky. It's synthy. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really cool. It's dancey. It's like uh, indie. It's like indie funk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a weird, it's interesting blend. Yeah. So we, we used to listen to them at my old place. Oh, so really? yeah, yeah. yeah. So their 2022 20, album, uh, Utopia is uh the album that i'm gonna recommend and then we also have a playlist that we put all of these on and then share with people on spotify so they can they can follow along yeah 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 but yeah and my sister and i saw them live like a couple years ago over in a small venue in detroit and they played like a really intimate show like they are very talented musicians so it was really cool but yeah season side note season one record time um, will not be added to anymore, but that is still available yes. on Spotify. So um, I think it's in basically every episode show notes mm-hmm. of season one. So mm-hmm. go there, hit hit follow. And how much music is there? It's like it's so, six hours so or something. So yeah. <laughs> on your car ride, just hit play and, yeah. and let it wash over you. And let and, it go. <laughs> um, 
yeah, it's going to be very eclectic because there's, yeah, there's all sorts a lot. of genres and stuff. <laughs> my my pick is actually um, Josh Garrell's uh, Jack Aranda 2008 album. Mm. Um, I've normally listened to his new stuff, but this is what I've been playing through. So um, it's just very vintage Josh Garrell's. And so um, very calming, very, uh, you know who he is. You, it's kind of what you would expect. Nice. So, um, yeah. That's what's, the, what's the name of that? Jacaranda, Jacaranda, Jacaranda. I think. J-A-C-A-R-A-N-D-A. Jacaranda. The 2008 album. 2008. <laughs> it's like, um, yeah, he's, it's got like a, uh, what's the word? It, it looks like an embroidered. Um, oh. oh, like a quilt. A quilt, yeah. Got you. But yeah, it's a great album. Nice. So we'll add that. Do you have a pick? You don't have to, but if there's yeah. something that comes to mind, yeah, we'll add it. Yep. Mm, I definitely don't have an album just That's okay. because I don't spend time <laughs> listening right. to just albums. That's all right. <laughs> it's like, uh, find a Spotify playlist yeah, that's in yeah. the realm of what we, we listen to, but... Mm-hmm. You're like um, study time uh, <laughs> for the coffee shop. Lo-fi beats. Yeah. Coffee shop 2022 playlist. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's pretty much it. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, an artist that we've been, like my wife and I both have been enjoying is Henry Jameson. Hmm. Um, he's got a couple different albums. I don't know. Yeah. I don't have a specific one. Maybe we'll dig around. Yeah. We just kind There's of play that. There's not specific. Yeah. But... Then the singular like song that comes to mind is actually um, one that like our church worship leader introduced to us, but it's called "He Won't." Yep. But, yeah. So yeah, that's been really good. But he he did a couple of like uh, backyard sessions this oh, cool. this summer, and so that was that was like the first time that he introduced it to those who were there, mm-hmm. and um, yeah become so, more of a and then now he's inter- yeah now he's introduced it to you know up, up front as well but, yeah but that was that's really been really cool so cool yeah yeah love that amazing well um coffee's gone y'all yeah coffee's gone we must abide by the rules um thanks again Stephen, for coming on and for especially for sponsoring the podcast absolutely yeah. Um, yep. yeah we're gonna be drinking quick water coffee um and it's very delicious so yeah. thanks again yeah Thanks, guys. Thank you. Love it.